Oh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Sanjay Opal. I'm the Senior Vice President and General Manager of the VeloCloud business at VMware. And uh, as you probably know, we developed SD-WAN. And now we're on this exciting path to developing a SASE platform. And with me, I have Craig Connors. Craig? Yes, I'm Craig Connors, I'm VP and CTO for the VeloCloud business at VMware. All right, awesome. So what we're going to do is uh, discuss what's going on in this whole exciting space of SASE. And the first thing is, you know, it seems like it's new and then again, it's not so new. And the not so new part, of course, is, you know, it requires uh, a network that is in the cloud. And we've had that, you know, from day one. So maybe, Craig, you can let's kick this off and say, well, what's not so new about it? And then we can get to what's the new part. Yeah, I think, you know, SASE is really about this thin branch, thick cloud model of delivering services in the cloud. And to Sanjay's point, from an SD-WAN perspective, that's something that we've done from the very beginning with our cloud gateways and our edge devices sitting on premise. What's changed now is we're talking about all of these different services, SD-WAN, security, remote access, or zero trust, as we call it now, converging together into that thick cloud model. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I've, we've seen people talk about this now for a few months, at least. Uh, we had planned to be on this path and it's just gotten accelerated because of the crisis. And uh, so what, what's actually happening in the crisis that has made SASE and the Zero Trust Service come to the forefront? Yeah, I think, you know, the shift to distributed workforce is obviously a big one. You look at VMware as an example not just now where in the short term we've sent everyone home, but long term you have Pat, our CEO saying maybe 60% of VMware employees will be working from home for the long term. So the distributed workforce that was gradually building has become a sudden rapid reality. And that has made centralizing services in the cloud even more important. Yep, absolutely. And you know, our mantra from day one has been the cloud is the network. And we also said architecturally distribute when you must centralize whenever you can. And the centralization is, is all in the cloud and it's getting these network services and network security services to come together. So SD-WAN service being the, the critical building block. And then just this week, we're adding the, you know, the zero trust service so that customers out there can get access, their secure remote access and their branch access can all now be terminated come to the SD-WAN points of presence, and from there they can go wherever they want to go. So it looks like just an outgrowth of what we've been working on architecturally, right? Yeah, I mean, you think about all the different services that users need to access. They could be in the corporate data center, they could be in IAS, they could be SaaS. They might want to go through a secure web gateway or a next-gen firewall to reach those services. And if you look at what VeloCloud SD-WAN was from the beginning, it was a way to distribute all of those services using our cloud gateways so they can be reachable from anywhere. And now with SASE, you know, we're well positioned to take advantage of this market. Now we have Workspace ONE ZTNA clients. They can access the same POPs where SD-WAN gateways are deployed, the same services. It's not a centralized backhaul to the data center model. You already have this sort of turnkey solution for a distributed cloud service. Yeah, that's great. And you know, branch access, one of the reasons why it went through this whole revolution and SD-WAN came in is precisely because of that terminating back into the data center didn't make sense. And now secure remote access is going through the same thing because traditional VPNs, all the legacy VPNs, they have you terminate back into your data center uh, and now, you know, since that doesn't work anymore because of the crisis, instead of terminating back at the data center, you just get a service. And now not only do you get a much more scalable service, but also there's all these benefits from a security standpoint in, you know, principle of least privilege and all that, where people just can't go anywhere when they land into the network, right? Yeah, that's right. And, and I think another thing that's important to highlight is, and the importance of SD-WAN as a component of SASE is that everyone's not going to be satisfied with remote access. So yes, we're using this new platform to bring remote access users in, but for the power user at home, for the call center agent, there are still a lot of people who need to make sure that their connectivity is high quality, always on, manages congestion against other users in the home. So I think as SASE emerges, we see a lot of vendors talking about 
being sassy when they're really just remote access VPN solutions. It's important to remember SD-WAN is a big component of that. We have a customer with more than 15,000 work from home users that are all on the phone all day long and they can't afford to have a call drop. So remote access VPN isn't good enough for them. That's how they ended up being with VeloCloud in the first place. So we can't lose SD-WAN when we talk about SASE. It is a key component. Absolutely. And it looks like a continuum. So you have the folks who are working from the office, they sit behind an SD-WAN edge, you know, they go off into the home. If they're a power user, as you pointed out, you know, in, in the insurance agent or things like telemedicine, where someone's really, you know, doing something that uh, impacts uh, a person's life, then of course they're a power user. You don't want their network to be congested or, or the application to drop. And then you have these light users, but even for the light users, instead of bringing them in and terminating back on the legacy VPN, you bring them in into the same SD-WAN point of presence and from there, they can get directed into a specific application or not. And so, and then, of course, if they wandered off into a coffee shop, you get the same work from anywhere. So work from anywhere, work from home, work from office, all coming together with an SD-WAN-based architecture and then security being added in through ZTNA. And then, as you were pointing out, additional layers of security from VMware and from partners. So this all sounds, I think, you know, it's a need of the hour. And this is why we're seeing you know, a lot of continued growth in the SD-WAN space. Yeah, it's pretty exciting to see our market expand like this and, and capture adjacent territory. So excited to see us continue to grow. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so great chatting with you again, uh, Craig, as usual. Of course, you know, we don't meet as frequently as we used to, uh, but here's the vir virtual high five to you and uh, let's go get some more sassy customers. <laughs>